Hello, this video is going to do a basic introduction to difference and differences estimation. This will be a non-regression based introduction. Economists generally don't have the luxury of performing experiments. So in many cases, economists will rely on natural experiments. Natural experiments result from changes in laws or regulations that affect only certain people counties, cities, states, firms, etc. A natural experiment creates a treatment and control group. The control group is not affected by the law change or regulation change, for example. To measure the effect of a law on the treatment group, we must know how the treatment group differs relative to the control group before and after the policy change. Difference in differences is like a clinical drug trial. A pill to lower blood pressure is given to some people, the treatment group, and a placebo or sugar pill is given to a control group. The treatment and control groups are compared to see the effect on blood pressure over time. The most critical assumption of difference in differences estimation is the parallel trend assumption. This requires that in absence of the treatment, the law change, regulation change, a change in the tax code, the difference between the treatment and control group will be constant or parallel over time. The violation of the parallel trend assumption will lead to biased estimation of the causal effect and more information can be found at this link here. So to take a look or think about this difference in differences estimation, let's put together a table where we have a treatment group. So this is the group of people or firms or cities or states that will be affected by the law change and the control group will be unaffected by the law. And we have before the policy change, after the policy change, the difference, and then in this bottom cell here will be the difference in differences estimation. So these letters here in the table represent the numbers of what is being measured. Could represent crime rates, housing prices, car accidents, car fatalities, unemployment rates, employment rates. Uh, etc. So these letters represent the things that we're measuring. And I will do a numerical example in just a minute. And as I mentioned, the difference in differences estimator is given by this bottom cell right here. So let's do an example. Let's examine the effect of the 1973 designated hitter rule, the DH rule, in Major League Baseball. The DH rule applied only to American League teams at the time, and it still does in fact today, not National League teams. So we have a treatment and control group. Amer American League teams are the treatment group. The DH rule applies to the American League teams. The National League teams are the control group this rule change does not affect those teams. We expect that the DH rule should lead to more runs scored because the DH hitter replaces the weak hitting pitcher in the batting lineup. So in the National League, where the DH rule doesn't apply, the pitcher will bat for himself. In the American League, the pitcher will no longer bat. When we have the DH rule, he'll have a much stronger hitter batting in place of the pitcher. So here is the table. Here is the American League teams. And in this column here, I have the 1972 average run scored. So this is the average run scored per team for the entire season in 1972. And again, there was no DH in the American League. And as I mentioned, the DH doesn't apply to the National League, and it still doesn't. And you can see here that American League teams on average scored 537 runs during the season, where National League teams on average scored 605 runs. In 1973, 
the year the DH rule went into effect, the following season, American League teams now on average scored 693 runs for the entire season. And the season back then was about 162 games. National League teams in the 1973 season averaged 672 runs. So let's get our difference in differences estimate. The first thing we do is this difference here of 693 minus 537. So over this period of time, American League's team scored 156 more runs during the season. National League teams also scored more runs. They scored 67 more. So 156 minus 67, this is the difference in differences, uh, we get 89 more runs scored as a result of the DH. So the DH rule is estimated to have increased the number of team runs scored per season by 89. This is about a little more than a half a run per game. We don't want to say that the DH rule Oops, misspelling here. We don't want to say that the DH rule increased runs scored by 156. This estimate doesn't take into account the general increase or trend in runs scored across the league. So for the control group, the control group saw an increase in runs scored. So in general, there might have been some just general increase in runs scored in the league. And therefore, we don't want to attribute this 156, all these runs here, simply being caused by the DH. On the other hand, we don't want to say the DH rule increased runs scored by just 21, 693 minus 672. This estimate doesn't take into account the fact of the much, much lower run production of the American League versus the natural, National League before the rule change. So the difference in differences estimate of the effect of the DH rule on runs scored is going to be 89. This takes into account the differences in runs scored before and after the rule change. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.